So in the next few slides, I want to step back from the classification problem and just think about the geometry of what we're doing and the geometry of hyperplanes. And this is going to help us understand what it is exactly that a linear classifier is trying to do with the data. So here, I've shown an example of a hyperplane in R2. So every vector w in Rd defines what can be called a hyperplane in Rd minus 1. So for example, when w is in R2, the hyperplane is a line. When w is in R3, the hyperplane is a, uh, like a piece of paper slicing through the space. And we can define the hyperplane. We can define this line h, the hyperplane associated with the vector w, to be the set of all points x such that the dot product between x and w is equal to 0. So that's, that's just saying, give me all vectors x that are orthogonal to w. So in this particular example, where w is in Rd, the only points in all of Rd such that the dot product is equal to 0 are the points that falls along this line here. So the points that fall along this line, any point that we pick, has a dot product with w equal to 0. In other words, all of these points are, ortho are orthogonal to w. So that's how we can define this hyperplane. Any point such that the dot product between that point and w is equal to 0. So given this definition of a hyperplane, is it possible to pick an arbitrary point and say which side of the hyperplane it's on? And so the answer is yes. So first, let's define the distance to the hyperplane. So if we have a point x, and we have a vector w, which defines a hyperplane, and so this is the origin right here, can we say how close x is to the hyperplane? What is this distance of x to the hyperplane? The Euclidean distance of this point if, to this, this plane. To do this, we use trigonometry. The vector x and the vector w have a certain angle between them. And we know from trigonometry that the cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse length. So in this case, the adjacent length is the distance from x to the hyperplane, because this is a 90 degree angle. And the, the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the vector x. So therefore, this length of x to the hyperplane is equal to the length of the vector x times the cosine of the angle between x and w. And now we use the cosine rule. And so I, I'm not going to derive this, but there's this equation that says that the dot product between x and w is equal to the magnitude of the vector x times the magnitude of the vector w times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. So therefore, we can say that the distance of x is equal to a function of this cosine rule. So we know that the distance of x to the hyperplane is equal to the magnitude of x times the cosine of their angle. And from this equation, we know that the magnitude of x times the cosine of the angle is equal to the dot product divided by the magnitude of w. And then finally, uh, we have to take the absolute value because in this case the cosine can take negative values in, as well and so in reality uh, this cosine as viewed here is the absolute value. So the magnitude of a vector x to a hyperplane defined by w is equal to the absolute value of the dot product between x and the vector w divided by the magnitude of the vector w. Okay, so since the vector w is 
not changing for any particular x that we choose, the absolute value of the dot product between x and w, in a sense, gives a measure of the distance of x to the hyperplane. Now we need to know which side of the hyperplane is it on. And so this returns to what I was saying before, where we take the absolute value to get the magnitude. If we now want to know which side of the hyperplane we're on, we know that the cosine of the angle between any vector x and a vector w, so if I pick any vector x that's in this half of the hyperplane, then the, the angle between that vector and w will be between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. And the cosine of any, uh, any angle in this set is positive. Similarly, if I pick any vector in this half of the hyperplane and take the dot product uh, and take the cosine of the angle between any vector here with w, then I'm going to be, uh, then that cosine will be negative. So any vector falling on this half of the hyperplane will have a cosine that's positive, and any vector on this half of the hyperplane will have an angle to w such that the cosine is negative. Therefore, if the cos, if the sine of the cosine of the angle between these two vectors tells us the side that h is on, by the cosine rule, we can therefore say that the sine of this right-hand side, these are two non-negative numbers, so they don't affect the sine, the sine, uh, where I'm here I'm saying sine with a g, of this right-hand side is equal to the sine of the left-hand side, trivially. But the sine of the right-hand side tells us the half of the hyperplane that x is on. And so the sine of the right-hand side tells us whether x is on the side of the hyperplane pointing in the direction of w or on the side of the hyperplane pointing in the opposite direction. Equivalently, the sine of the dot product tells us this as well, tells us that as well. So in short, if I have a hyperplane and I want to know which side of the hyperplane uh, any particular vector falls on, I take the dot product of that point with w, take the sine. If it's positive, then I know that x has to be on the side uh, pointing in the direction of w. If it's negative, I know it has to be on the side pointing in the op opposite direction of w. OK, we've defined a hyperplane. Now what is an affine hyperplane? An affine hyperplane can be thought of as just a shifted hyperplane. So we, we let a vector w define a hyperplane in our space. We now want to shift it in some direction. So we want to shift it either parallel in the direction of w or in the opposite direction of w uh, so that, for example, we can separate our data uh, more easily. So w, the vector w as discussed previously, defines the, the hyperplane. It's w naught that then decides the shifting of the hyperplane. Think of the affine hyperplane H as being all points x such that x transpose w plus w naught is equal to 0. Previously, w naught was equal to 0, and so the hyperplane was all the points such that they were orthogonal to w. Now we've added this constant term, and we want the values of x such that the sum is equal to 0. If we work out the, the math, again, using the, the geometry and the trigonometry, what we can show is that the value w naught shifts the hyperplane in the direction opposite its sign according to w. So if w naught is a negative number, then we're going to shift the hyperplane a certain amount in the direction that w is pointing. If w, if w naught is a positive number, then we're going to shift that hyperplane in the opposite direction that w is pointing. And the magnitude of the distance that we shift it 
is equal to negative w naught is equal to w uh, the absolute value of negative w naught divided by the mag L2 magnitude of w. So if we shift it a certain amount in the positive direction uh, or a certain amount in the negative direction, this value determines how much. So if we come back to this uh, affine hyperplane defined by all points x such that x transpose w plus w naught is equal to zero, we get something that looks like this. So in this case, uh, w naught would be a negative number, which is shifting the hyperplane in the direction that w is pointing. <clears throat> so let's, let's kind of parse this. Consider any vector x that's on the right of the dotted line and the left of the solid line. We know from the previous slide that the dot product of a point x, say it's this point here, the dot product of this point, of this vector with w, is going to be positive. However, w naught in this case is also negative. So for all points within this slab, what that's saying is that the positive amount that you add from the dot product is not greater than the negative amount that you add from w naught, and so the net sum of those two values is still negative. And so every point in here will have a dot product with w that is less, that is positive, but not, uh, but but such that when we then add w naught to it, we still get a negative number. All vectors along this uh, this line, for example, this vector. If I took the dot product of this vector with w, that would be equal to the negative of w naught. So when I would add those two together, I would get 0. And every single point on the left of the dotted line has a negative dot product with w, and then I'm adding a negative number, and so of course that is also negative. So we have an affine hyperplane. w naught is shifting the hyperplane such that now it's this line that is defining what side is uh, positive and what side is negative. So let's look at this with classification. Imagine that we have this data set. The vectors x are in R, R2, and there are two classes, a red class and a blue class. We want to find a vector w and a scalar w naught such that the sign of this function with all blue points is positive and the sign of the function with all red points is negative. Uh, geometrically and intuitively, what we're asking for when we find these vector, this vector w and the scalar w naught is we're acti asking for a, uh, an angle of the hyperplane defined by w. So this, the line has to be perpendicular to the vector w. And we're asking for a shift of that hyperplane defined by w naught. So the vector w is going to say that we're going to create a hyperplane with this angle, except it's passing through the origin. And then w naught is going to shift that hyperplane in some direction, such that we can separate the data. So in this case now, we have defined a vector w and a value for w naught, such that the sine of the function on this half is negative, and the sine of this function on the right half is positive, and so we can classify all of the data that we have.